Welcome to worship at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. This is the second Sunday of Easter. And I invite everyone to join in lighting your candles as we share the light of Christ. Hello, I am Pastor Michelle. Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church, and Dorothy, I'll have you introduce yourself. My name is Dorothy, and I'm the deacon here at Bread of Life, and I am Dorothy Sparks. And the interpreter, the interpreter would introduce herself, and this is... Uh, Wendy, and this is her sign name. And now let us enter worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. Let us confess our sins. We offer our confession in the name of God the Creator and of Jesus Christ the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, we confess that we have sinned in our words, our actions, and our thoughts. We have sinned against you and against one another. Please forgive us. We may try to hide from you but you know everything about us. Please forgive us. Have mercy upon us, forgive us, and renew your spirit within us. Teach us to walk with you, let the glory of your holy name shine from our lives. Amen. God is rich in mercy. God loved us even when we were dead in sin. And God made us alive. together with Christ. By God's grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, strengthen and encourage you through faith Christ lives in your hearts 
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, we do not look for Jesus among the dead. Jesus is alive and is the Lord of life. Teach our hearts and our minds to trust in the risen life we share with Christ. Help us grow toward the fullness of life with you. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Uh, my friends, today, as in other weeks when we've had our regular Bread of Life worship experience, I want to make a couple of comments before the gospel lesson. So today, you'll notice that we uh, shift away from the Gospel of Mark because we're going to spend a few weeks going through some stories of Jesus um, showing up and being with followers after the resurrection. And the amazing thing about uh, these stories is the reminder that Jesus comes to us. God, the creator of everything, God comes to us. So we will spend some time as a community in wonder and awe that this is how our God behaves, coming to us. Today's story is uh, taken from the Gospel of John, and it is in the evening of the first day after Jesus' resurrection was discovered. So in the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb and meets Jesus in the garden. And at first she doesn't recognize Jesus. She thinks Jesus is the gardener. Once she knows who Jesus is, she runs back and she tells the other disciples. And then Peter and John run to the tomb. They race each other. They run to the tomb. And then they discover that Jesus is not there. And so today's lesson from the Gospel of John happens in the evening after all of those other events. The Gospels, the disciples are locked in an upper room. They've closed themselves in. They are fearful for their lives because they are followers of Jesus. And Jesus was just crucified. So the leaders and the people who have power, that power structure, they are looking for those followers too. So they're afraid. And they're in hiding. I want to say that, um, I want to just make sure to mention that in the years in between the, God, the disciples meeting in the upper room and our lives now, often the Gospel of John has been interpreted and translated to say that the Jews, that the Jews in general, are the reason that Jesus was crucified. That is wrong. It's a wrong interpretation of John, and this wrong interpretation has led to horrible, horrible things happening 
against Jewish people. Those bad things continue to happen. Like horrible actions against Jewish people. For us, for the world, for anyone to blame the Jewish people for Jesus' death, that's wrong. I will add that there are many people who were responsible for Jesus' death and crucifixion, but we cannot blame all of the Jewish people. It would be as if we would blame all deaf people for some problem in the world. We cannot blame all of one kind of people for a, a problem. So when Jesus was crucified, there were many people who were responsible for that decision. And in particular, it was leaders, leaders who worked together to try to take away the threat. They felt like Jesus was a threat to them and to their comfort and their security. And so they removed Jesus. It was leaders from the Jewish community and from the Roman military. Those leaders are the ones who work together. It's important for us when we're looking at the Gospel of John to just keep that in mind, that for a long time in history, people have used this Gospel to blame the whole Jewish community for Jesus' death. That's wrong. So I wanted to mention that because I'm not going to talk about it in my sermon, but it's an important thing for us to keep in our minds as we receive this gospel lesson today. And then the last thing I want to just say is that this year, as we get this story, uh, we may be able to feel a new kind of um, connection with the disciples. Because we, too, are staying inside. We're staying away from others. We are fearful for our lives and the lives of others. We're not afraid because of the government threat that the state is coming after us or that we're afraid someone will kill us, but there is a disease going around and people die from this disease. And so we are fearful too. And just like the disciples, we are unsure of what comes next. We are unsure of how to be faithful followers of Jesus. Like the disciples, we are unsure. And so now I ask Dorothy to share the gospel lesson. In a gospel reading from John 20, verses 19 to 29. The disciples were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And on the evening of that same Sunday, when Jesus was resurrected, they locked themselves in a room. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the middle of the group. He said, peace be with you. And he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, 
so am I sending you. Then Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their, their sins, they will be forgiven. But if you do not forgive their sins, they will not be forgiven. Although Thomas, the twin, was one of the twelve disciples, he was not with the others when Jesus appeared to them. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, first I must see the nail scars in his hands and touch them with my finger. I must put my hand where the spear went into his side. I won't believe unless I do this. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. This time Thomas was with them. Jesus came in while the doors were still locked and stood in the middle of the group. Jesus said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, You are my Lord and my God. And Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see me and yet believe. My friends, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We need these words, don't we? We need these words. These are Jesus' words. So I will say them again, give a little time for those words to settle. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. In today's gospel lesson, we experience Jesus showing up so unexpectedly. And then Jesus breathes peace into us. I think we look at it and wonder, how? How does Jesus do this? How is that possible? And today and yesterday, I experienced this in different ways. Jesus surprises us and shows up and breathes peace into us. I'm going to give a couple examples. In one way, I experience this surprising piece is through the process of making a hard decision. Not an easy thing to do, weighing all of the pros and cons and wondering if I'm doing the right thing or not. Oh my goodness. Again and again, going back and forth. And after that decision is made, Experiencing peace. Letting go of all those worries, letting go of the what ifs, letting go of the oh, maybe I'm going to make the wrong choice. Jesus 
shows up and breathes peace. Even in that process of making a hard decision. Another way I observe Jesus showing up in just such a surprise this week was through an honest conversation when we pour out our hearts, sharing our fears, sadness, our worries, Letting the tears fall. After that, peace. Jesus comes. He settles. Jesus comes in the midst of that sadness and the fears and the worries. Jesus is right there. Peace. Jesus also shows up and gives us this peace through laughter and experiencing joy. When we take time to notice the things that give us delight, It isn't selfish, and instead, Jesus is right there with us in that delight, in that joy, breathing peace into us. So I wonder, what helps you experience peace? When have you noticed your body really just as relaxed, calm, at peace? These are the moments that God promises to us. Jesus is right there with you. Jesus is bringing you Jesus shows up, even through locked doors, shows up, brings peace. And in today's gospel lesson, the disciples are afraid. They are terrified. They have locked themselves into a room. They are keeping themselves apart from the crowd. Does that feel familiar to you? I wonder if this year we experienced something more like what the disciples experienced. We are afraid. We are staying behind our own closed doors. And we are keeping ourselves apart from the crowd. If you go for a walk and someone is coming toward you, you cross the street, you give wide berth, you do not get close. Because we are staying apart from the crowd. And now, at this Easter time, just as at that first Easter time, Jesus shows up. Jesus enters into our lives, even though we are afraid. Jesus enters into our lives, even though we have our doors locked. Jesus enters into our lives, stays with us.
And every time Jesus shows up for us, what does Jesus do? Jesus breathes peace. Jesus greets us and proclaims peace. Be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. So right now, we get we relate to the disciples in a new way. Because we are staying inside away from others. We are fearful for our lives and the lives of our neighbors. As I said before, we're not fearful because of, we're afraid of the government, we're afraid of the military, or that someone is coming, someone is coming to our homes to take us away and kill us. But we are fearful. And we, we now are unsure of what comes next. We are unsure of how to be faithful followers of Jesus at this time. We are unsure, just like those disciples were that first Easter. So at this moment, just like that moment, all those years ago, Jesus joins us. So what does Jesus do? Jesus is present and breathes onto us, greeting us with peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. In prayers of the let us pray for all people of God and their needs. God, we offer up all these prayers into your hands, trusting that you pay attention to us and pour your mercy upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So at this time, I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with others.
Maybe you're sitting next to someone this morning. Share the piece. But perhaps you're not. And so get out your phone, send a text message, or send an email quick. Later on, use VP. Give a VP call to someone and just say, God's peace be with you. Maybe you need to send a card. Write a card, send a card, or write a quick letter. I got a letter in the mail today. Oh, it's so wonderful to get a letter. It's so wonderful. So take a couple minutes and share God's peace with one, two, ten people. If we were together at Bread of Life, after we share the peace, we would uh, collect the offering. We would collect our gifts of money that we give to the work that we do at Bread of Life. We still are doing that work. God is still calling us and giving us a mission to share in the work that God is doing in the world we are depending on God to lead us and to save us. So as we live stream, we are connecting to a wider group of people than we have for a very long time. We can share this worship experience. We can share the good news of God's love with deaf people and their families. That's what God calls us to do. So the work of our church and the work of God's larger church continues on. So we are inviting you to share your offerings, to share your money and your gifts with Bread of Life. This is an act of worship when you share your money it's an act of trust that together with God, we can do impossible things. And now let us... Lift our hearts to you like you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, from death to life. Amen. And now, the Lord's Prayer. And now the final blessing. Darkness has become light. 
Sorrow has given way to joy and to hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and bear witness to the good news you have received this day. We go in the name of the Creator and of the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share God's good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.